Listen to God's word as it comes to us from the second chapter of Luke's gospel, the first 20 verses. Listen once more to God's word. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields. They were keeping watch over their flock by night. But then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Now when the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in, their, in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of our God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that in your goodness and wisdom and creativity and love, <clears throat> you came to us as one of us. And in Jesus, your love was born in a baby in Bethlehem. Draw near to us now and open our eyes and ears and hearts and minds that the words of my mouth and the meditation on our hearts might be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So there was a moment I will never forget. Now, it took place during my first doctor's appointment after I had learned that I was pregnant. And this was when the doctor said, all right, let's see if we can find your baby's heartbeat. Now, the doctor told me not to worry. It was still early, early, but we would give it a shot. And so, with quiet expectation, there was relief and joy as I heard my child's heartbeat for the first time, who's now a kindergartner. But it's not only the moment of hearing his heartbeat I remember. It is that moment just before. It's that moment of not knowing what is going to come next, but knowing the story is about to continue and it's about to get good. It's this moment of promise and hope and wonder. It's a moment of joy. 
Now, when we stop to think about it, life is filled with moments that are ripe with anticipation. Now, there are some that are more exciting than others, but they are a part of our daily lives. You know, that instant of being mid-air when you are about to plunge into a pool doing a cannonball. It doesn't last long, and you wonder how cold the water will be and how far the splash will go. But for that instant, anything is possible. There's that curiosity that takes place in that moment of the coin toss at the beginning of a big game. How will this moment let things play out? Or there's that moment following a wedding proposal, that heartbeat between the question and the answer, filled with wonder of what might come next. All right, now this experience, this placeholding filled with wonder is not only something that happens during these exceptional times, they kind of happen every day and we may not even notice them. You know, there's that instant when you open your mailbox and you look for mail and you wonder who it is that might have made contact with you that day. And I know I am not the only person who still hopes for a handwritten note in their mailbox, right? They are still way better than email. Or <clears throat> that moment when you have taken the, when you're about to take the first bite of a meal that you made using a new recipe. It doesn't yet have the comfort of knowing that the ingredients you've thrown into the pot will be to your liking, but there is hope at something new something that might be good. Or there is taking the risk of leaving the dial of your radio open instead of asking Siri to play your playlist and just seeing what might come. Maybe it will even be a song that you like. See, life in its most mundane and exceptional moments have these these little take your breath away moments that are pregnant with possibility. And even when life is difficult or when it is mundane, it is filled with small and large opportunities to glimpse hope, feel wonder, and experience joy. Now we've heard familiar verses of Luke's gospel this evening. And the story that Luke tells is both personal and political the story of the formation of a surprising family and a surprising community all at the same time. It's the story of the requirements of day-to-day -day life where sometimes things are tough and don't go the way we had planned. And it's the story of a God who disrupts the status quo again and again, of choices and travels and praise. <clears throat> Now, Luke's storytelling tone in this gospel is quite matter of fact for one who is delivering such big news. The circumstances in this text are nothing short of extraordinary, but Luke just tells it like it is. This is how things work. Babies are born when they are born and wherever they might find a safe rest. Parents do their best for their kids, making <clears throat> cradles out of feeding troughs when no crib is in sight. And God does God's best for humanity entering the world with wiggling little fingers and a squeaky cry and depend dependence on the best of what is in creation to keep God in Christ safe and thriving. Luke tells this down-to-earth story of a majestic God who enters the world God has made and fulfills God's promises, making prophecies come true and angels sing and shepherds run from the fields. This is how things work. God is here. Whether we're ready or not, whether we believe it to be possible or have our doubts, God is with us. God is here. There is reason for wonder and joy and hope and love. 
Theologian and author Rachel Held Evans writes this. <clears throat> God is with us, plain old us. God is with us in our fears and our pain, in our morning sickness and ear infections, in our refugee crisis and in our endurance of empire, in smelly barns and unimpressive backwater towns, in the labor pains of a new mother and the cries of a tiny infant. In all these things, God is with us and God is for us. This Christmas Eve, we are invited to hear these words once more and to hear with new ears and open eyes and an awareness in our hearts and minds that God is with us here, that God is for us too, that God is at work in the world that God has made, and that even when life is difficult or mundane, there is still a cause for hope. So tonight, let us pause. Maybe it's before we will come and enjoy a communion meal together. Or maybe it will be before you will gather around a table with those you love most in the world. Or hold your coat tight as you walk to your car on this cold, cold night. But in the midst of the busy and the distracting, let us be present enough to anticipate with wonder and joy and hope that God is with us and doing a new thing among us. Let us think about how we might create space in our lives and in our world for the miraculous to appear in our midst. Let us tune our senses that we might experience God engaging us May we hear the most angelic songs through the lips of ordinary people and notice God is here. Friends, this is our Christmas good news. The extraordinary love of God comes to us in the most ordinary of ways through that babe that was born in a manger in Bethlehem. May we, through the ordinary and extraordinary, point out God's love with us now and always. Friends, may it be so. Amen.